right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns. It is brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Grips, Tack Pack, Primary Arms, and MAF. I am your host, Matt LaRosier, and I'm here with my special co-host, co -host, Mike Friggin' B, as he goes. Mike, who who are you? Um, I'm just a random dude that started a YouTube channel a few years ago, and uh, people know me now, apparently. So I like I like firearms. I, I've been called a FUD many times because I like old bolt-action firearms, but I also love every kind of firearm ever mm -hmm. known to Matt. So you like red, red guns? Red guns? Yeah. Kami guns? What about blue guns? What about blue guns? You're gonna you're gonna have to also um yes, I am a kind of a boomer FUD when it comes to a lot of shit mentally. Mm -hmm. When you when you're like you have all these things that I don't know about. So we'll we'll just go with that. Like like you're gonna have to explain a lot of shit to me, is what I'm saying. What about any yellow guns? I, I don't what, what's the yellow? Oh, like okay, so we're talking we're ta what are we doing here? Do you have any green guns? Yeah, actually, I do. Is it good? All right. Does it shoot better or worse than the other ones? The same. Okay, that's good. So then, why you why would you make it green? Because I like the color. What's oh? Green. Okay. It blends that's into reasonable. the pine trees around my residence. But yeah, so you also have like a website or something where you sell garbage, right? Yeah, I, I sell. <laughs> I'm an overcoat peddler, as okay. Matt would call me. Um, I sell military surplus stuff, and it's on Mike'sMilitaria.com. I've um, been doing that for about seven years now, and I sell things that I love, and it's amazing. I love doing it. It's freaking fun. So, Pull that up real quick. Oh, wow, look at this. You got your own website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to sign up. Sorry. Let's see what you got. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, you got a Swedish. You got Swedish a funny hat. Swedish 90L, yeah. Yeah. This is all cool stuff. And yeah, no, I've gotten some stuff from uh, from Mike over the years, and it's it's all been good. He, you know, he he picks out more interesting things that you don't see at a, you know, a lot of the other surplus peddlers. So be sure to check out Mike'sMilitaria.com if you guys are interested in you know the garbage that militaries throw away in Europe. <clears throat> well, or they just overbuy and just never use. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is. Uh, what the U.S. does a lot too. Just fun. yes, they, they all do because it's not their oh. money. No. Nope, um, nope. uh, so, moving on now, where do you get most of your gun news? Right when you're when you're trying to, or or just if you want to get edified on a on a gun topic, where do you go? Who do you? Oh, uh, to you because I, um, honest to God, it's not just jerking you off, and, mm -hmm. and I'll explain why. Is I've removed myself from most of like mainstream media and all that stuff because it's just there's a billion things being thrown at you constantly right right and i'm like i i don't have the effort and the capacity to research every possible story is this bullshit is this is this real did this happen did this not what actually happened and i usually tend to uh tend to um kind of remove myself from a situation until more of the facts have come out mm -hmm. i just i cannot stand the um clickbait uh depending on people being so scared or pissed off or fearful emotional wise, I, I don't like that reaction because I've been there and I, and I've done that. I did that for years and now I don't really look at any mainstream source. So if I want to know something about what's going on in the news, I'll ask you, I'll ask, um, um, I'll just talk to people on my discord because they'll mm -hmm. probably have a handle on it, but I myself do not do that anymore. I don't, listen to the mainstream media for gun things because it's always one-sided whether it's right or left or whatever the hell football team you want to you know play on right it's like you know whatever it's it's just not good it's not factual i just want to know the facts like right when we get into these stories i just want to know the facts and i want to make up my own mind well so i, I can't help but notice you didn't say like, well you're wrong obviously that's the wrong place to get it from and you didn't even mention rappers and actors well, that I didn't want it's to admit clearly the thing that, to do. but like that's actually I go on Instagram, I go on TikTok, and yeah, I'll get a, I'll get a, I'll get a baseline opinion and kind of knowledge of what's going on based on what they say. But yeah, no, you should. They should be the end all be all because so well, they're famous. So like yeah, their, their word actually matters. What they say really matters, and we should all listen to that more. Well, so you've heard of Ti, right? 
Yeah, I definitely didn't you, have to. You can have whatever you was. like. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're what you're talking about. Like, yeah, I, I definitely didn't have to Google who that was. Well, he's a Atlanta based rapper and actor, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a guest on the you know very relevant and continually a good place Comedy Central, uh, the late night show Hell of the Week, and he said a lot of interesting things about the the gun control situation in the United States. Mm -hmm. Lisa, it's it's an oxymoron. Right. So listen, this is I'm going to I'm going to give you the word straight from uh, the expert gun control in this country. That sounds like an oxymoron a little bit, uh, stated the self-proclaimed king of the south. <laughs> the, <laughs> OK, the country right. was founded on firepower. Who had the most ability to pose the biggest threat? How about more than just an ID to get one firearm? They already do background checks. That's not necessarily enough because they don't arrest you for being a crazy white person. <laughs> uh, as long as you have managed to bypass the legal system and you're 21, that's all you need. And once you get a license in every other industry or other license you can have, whether it's a driver's license, a barber's license, a CDL license, CDL license, cool, you have to renew it. <laughs> At a certain period in time, they reevaluate whether or not you should be eligible to still have this license. Are you responsible? A gun license, you can get at 18 and keep it until you're 80. People I'm, sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt you with the laughter, but like a gun license you get at 18 and you keep till you're 80? No shit. That was his quote. You just, you just showed it. You just showed it. That was his quote. Right. <laughs> All right. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> look. So, uh, a commercial driver's license license, um, you know that that's <laughs> that's uh, up for review every few years or whatever, and you have to you know apply for that whenever. Uh, yeah, I actually had this conversation with somebody when I was in college, and this person was telling me that well you have to have a license to drive a car i said yeah okay mm -hmm. i said well where is a motor vehicle explicitly defined in the constitution <laughs> and she's or they said sorry i just gave it up this was actually at a medium security prison in a class that i did this and it was right. another student i said where explicitly in the constitution does it say you have the right to drive a motor vehicle I know the whole right to move and all that stuff, like the movement thing, but I, I just asked her, I was like, where yeah, does it explicitly, yeah, where does it explicitly say motor vehicle in the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights? And she's like, huh? I said, yeah, there, there, there's my answer. Like, I knew the answer, but I thought you would give me a little bit more, but she just said, huh? Yeah. And said, there's your answer. Like, it's not comparable. It's not. Well, the Constitution isn't. I mean, we have to understand that was written by crazy white people. Yeah, that it shouldn't. Well, as as a crazy white man, I can. Remember. You shouldn't be speaking. Okay. Right. Well. I'm so anyway, to... let's move on. So this is, um, with this guy Ti. He was, and it's it's such a, a horrible thing, right? Because he was arrested in two thousand seven, mm -hmm. with possession of firearms by for possession of firearms by a convicted felon and possession of unregistered machine guns and silencers. I don't know how, after going through that hell and being in prison for years because of the enforcement of unconstitutional gun control laws, how do you get gaslit into then advocating for the thing that they locked you up for? Dude, it's it's the entertainment industry. It's Hollywood. It's 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 the you know New York City. It's it's this thing that it's this machine that grinds people down into believing that that's the way that it should be. And it's like it's a very small part of the population, mm -hmm. but they have a lot of quote unquote influence, which I don't think is correct. Or I don't think it's right um, on the average everyday Joe. And so what, what do you know his previous uh, felony convictions before he was caught with that shit? In no, but it was probably something nonsense. Yeah. Just something, something dumb, like a fucking class H or class, whatever, yeah, like what? low, low tier felony. Um, Cause that'd be interesting to know. Like, so he's caught with that. He's what did he get out of that? Do you know? Like, I mean, the possession, like the ATF must have had a field day with that one. Oh, finally, we get to do something because right. our jobs aren't, aren't, aren't fucking retarded. And it was a and, 1998 and drug conviction. 
a drug so yeah a drug and drug condition so in 2007 what did what happened what were the um consequences for that um like back in 98 no 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 no. when he got caught with all the quote-unquote illegal firearms and all that hoopla bullshit uh, well i know he was in jail until 2009 when he was in, er, released so i don't know what oh, the so actual... got two years two years for all that shit uh, or maybe it was a year the way the timing worked out. I don't know, but well, no, no, he wasn't in there to 2009 because, like, he was. I was listening to him in 2008. That's when right. he popped. So, like, it, you know, that's why I'm just curious about what he actually, what the the consequences were. Was it a fine? Was it no? Yeah, oh. he went to prison. Um, that's insane. Yeah. So he says that the, and then this in the story that was written in 2008. Um, he said that the the conviction was paranoia fueled. He was busted by ATF back then, uh, while he was on his way to the Hip Hop Awards. Mm. Took a plea deal in March and was sentenced to a year in prison and at least a thousand hours mm. of community service. Okay, there you go. So he was sentenced to a year. So he gets out after a year mm -hmm. with shit that any normal normal person will say, right? Um, would be thrown in prison for decades, right? That's right. <laughs> and he gets out and then he starts, he starts, you know, dropping more records, yeah. does all that shit. And then that's fine. And then all of a sudden now he's a proponent for gun control. Well, so here's and what like, he said back then. Yeah. He said, while his latest run in with the law won't affect his music, he, he, he said, I can't talk about guns and drugs as elaborately because they're not part of my life anymore. <laughs> to his okay. fans, he said, if you think guns, drugs, and violence are cool, I think you are definitely missing the point. There's nothing cool about going to jail. And so there's an interesting logical leap there, right? Right. right. So it's like the violence, obviously, that's bad. Don't be violent yeah, unless you're not. protecting yourselves. But yeah. it's the, the end point is there's nothing cool about going to jail. So why not advocate for not sending people to jail for peaceably having guns and, and drugs? Right. Right. <laughs> but but you you get you get so I guess people get so freaking beat down and terrified by the system, right? That is the judicial system in the United States, uh, that they're going to just say whatever they want because it's, Oh, well, they're, they're doing good. They're doing great. We just, we just released them from prison. Yeah. They're, they're now an advocate on our behalf of, of telling people. Yeah. This not. definitely wasn't coerced. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> yeah. And, it's like, and it's also brainwashing. It's, it's really, it really is. And I mean, for him to come out now after, you know, yeah, he had his little peak in 2008, 2009, blah, 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 and then tried and then failed miserably years later. Right. Um, and then for, for him to now come out, it was like, yeah, most people Comedy don't know Central, who the fuck the most, you are, dude. Like the most yeah, like exactly. well-revered, uh, <laughs> uh, well, so it's interesting that you said about like, he did one year for this. He had machine gun silencers and was a convicted felon. Well, now check out this next story. And this next story is ex incredibly upsetting. Yes. And this is, a, I have to be a little careful because this is a case that I'm involved in now. And and I did, I did do, this is the one thing that Matt said that I did a tad bit of research on, right. but not too much. So yeah, that's a caveat, but yeah, go ahead. So then look now at this headline, right? So let's look at the headlines first, because that's, that's a huge issue in our community mm -hmm. with the headlines, what the, the title cards say versus what actually happened. So we've got mm -hmm. here, sailor convicted of dealing arsenal of machine guns, grenade launchers. And so here's Patrick, 28 years <laughs> old. I just want to really quickly interject. This is the military times. Right throwing some of their own under the bus that's what got me because i read the same article when i did research mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's insane to me but it's not surprising let's just put it that way so go ahead so and this is what the military times is saying about him yep uh a u.s navy sailor who was building and selling a personal arsenal of heavy weaponry one that could arguably rival what the u.s is sending to ukraine <laughs> is now behind bars Jesus, Proust, like, no. Anyway, well, just keep going. Sorry. It's so that 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 to me pisses me off so fucking bad. Yeah. When they say one could arguably rival what the U.S. is sending to Ukraine, that's that's preposterous. It's fucking. I, I don't know. Oh, whoever wrote this is a fucking idiot. 
like I don't want to say harsher words because I don't want Matt's channel to get blasted, but like mm -hmm. what well, I mean, we're past the, the first minute by a long how time. In so the fuck, you want. How in the fuck do you have the audacity and the fucking balls to write something like that about a fucking sailor without giving him the benefit of the fucking doubt? Right. That's what pisses me off. Yeah, and I'm immediately, looking at immediately, we're not even we're not even into the article yet. They don't know, they don't they don't do anything, they don't do anything about the truth. And then we have the US Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. like coming out with this uh he had 25 unregistered machine guns as well as two grenade launchers and two anti-tank missile launchers <laughs> an unbelievable arsenal yep. we are grateful for the jury's guilty verdicts and thanks to atf washington for their typical outstanding investigative work so, so please please define for people listening and watching what exactly they found because you told me a little bit and i'm I'm going to go on a fucking rant after you yeah. say that. So you've been to gun shows, right? Uh-huh. You've also been to websites that sell parts kits like Apex and, and you know, the other ones. I'm yes. sure you've bought some. Yes. Have you ever bought an inert uh, rocket launcher with a fucking hole in it? I don't have the money, but I But you've seen them for sale. Them. The RPG-7s, yeah. the, RPG, yeah. the, the BT-2s with the hole in it? Yeah. Yep. Of course, that that that's it's awesome. It's cool that you can get that. It's in there. The ATF authorized that. So, oh yeah, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. This all guy yeah. had cut up parts kits. Mm -hmm. Cut up, but it's like one cut, Matt. Well, I'm not sure about the exact status that, of it. I, I was looking at forums, which is. Probably not right. Well, yeah. Don't but, don't go there. But but they were they're all against him. It was funny. It was like they were like, oh, it was only cut once, and that's we know this is a no no since whatever. And I'm like, well, since what these fuck? things? So here's the thing: saw cuts had come into this country by mm -hmm. the truckload, or mm -hmm. no, by the shipload. Yes. If ATF changed its mind, ATF is the one that had records of who the importers were, and when mm -hmm. they changed their mind on bump stocks, they made sure to let everybody know we changed our mind. They didn't do that with parts kits. I think that would suggest that they didn't actually think they were machine guns because there's no receiver anymore. It's cut. It's cut. It's, it's not it's going not to work. Yes. Yeah. So that's the type of stuff we're dealing with. Oh, and yes. the rocket launchers? Hole in it. Inert fire controls that say in, in Russian or whatever all over them, dummy training. Mm -hmm. So what the ATF did... They raid this guy. He's just a collector of parts. Correct. And he like buys and sells them, right? Just regular old parts that you see on Gun, gun Broker all the time. Yep. ATF took their own fire controls for an RPG, collaged it into the, the dummy one, and got it to fire one of the training rockets. No, it's not a rocket, right? The training things? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The... Yeah. And they were like, oh, so, yep, yep. That's a rocket launcher. Despite the fact that it would blow your actual face off if you fired oh, a rocket, which where are you going to get the rocket? My God, that's yeah. why <laughs> I've been seeing the, since I was a child, I've right. seen the same exact hole cut in or any kind of RPG and the AT4 tubes. They don't even right. cut holes in those fuckers. Yeah. You could buy those, you know, whatever. But let's not, let's not talk about that because, you know, it, it is not relevant to the story, but it is. But, right. I'm just saying, like, since I was a child, I've seen these fucking tubes being sold. How many people have them? They're they're cool. You hang them on your wall. Yeah. You fuck around with them. You get drunk around the fire with your buddies. And you go, oh, look, this is what an RPG looks like. It can't fire anything. Because like you said, if you pull that trigger with a live, if you happen to have a live fucking rocket. Yeah. Which, gone. good luck. How'd ski. you get that? Yeah. yeah good luck, A. Yeah. And B, you're done ski. Yeah. You're over. Like, it, it's over. And so they've been on the market for at least 20 years, at least. That's why well, I Well, ATF changed their mind about the RPGs, and now they want not only a hole in it, but a rod welded through it. But again, what the I didn't even know they did that, and I, this is my thing. And so they're, like, going after this type of shit now. It's absurd. Well, he's it's got absurd. grenade launchers and, and, a, and a tank rocket launcher. It's like, no, he's well, not. Also, by the way. The 203 stuff and the M79 stuff, where you can buy a the receivers, mm -hmm. no problem, legal. Mm -hmm. You can buy the barrels, no problem, legal. You don't mm -hmm. put them together until you do your Form 1. 
Yep. Well, ATF thinks if they can just assemble things for you. Anyway, so this is absurd, and I detest oh, yeah. all of the reporting on this because they're just saying, oh, yeah, the, the machine gun, the arsenal, and stuff like that. It was just parts. This is so horrible. Parts this is a that I've had in my possession in the past, yeah. and you've had, and you have currently, and I have currently, those parts kits that are just sitting there in pieces. Yeah. Those are machine guns. Because yeah. they could possibly be made it like oh so all of, all of all of my semi-automatic AR 15s that I have, right? Because those could theoretically possibly be made into machine guns. Right. Those are all machine guns. It's like and no, that's no, not so how they're it saying works. like and people keep going about the readily restored to shoot. For one, readily restored uh, refers to something that is currently a weapon and was previously uh, anyway, it's a whole long thing. But, but it's retarded. what's easier, it's stupid. drilling a hole in an AR-15 or welding together two pieces? Well, there we go. Now, yeah. I don't, you know, it's not going to fuck up because I'm, I'm sure the ATF will watch you and be like, well, shit, that's a good point. We should fucking <laughs> say that all AR-15s are fucking possibly machine guns. And yeah. it's like, well, there's so many of them out there. Who gives a fuck? You can't possibly do that with the manpower that you don't right. have. Um, But like, it's... Well, and also, that would be like... Though. if. Th them pulling that type of move it is it's, it's exactly the same logic it's retarded. but i think they know that if they tried that it would just you know if anything were to lead to significant change in the law it would be that right and it, it, it's it's stupid because they have to you know rating a guy like this that has parts kits that were at one point deemed legal and totally good to go by the atf and purchased as free merchandise per like with exactly. a credit card for god's sake right because the atf said this is not a firearm because right. the receiver is not intact it's so disintegrated it's not right um because you know he possessed those it's like well shit uh we gotta justify our existence and our salary somehow let's go do this and make a big story about it and fuck over some random guy that doesn't deserve it it's like what the fuck are you doing well so let me tell you how they got this guy and sure. it's all out here. I'm not saying anything that I've learned, you know, privately. Yes. Yeah, and I've discussed in, in depth. Anybody, anybody can look this up. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, but I'm just letting everyone know because people mm -hmm. like to, you know, armchair legal scholar. Yeah. It, I've, I've discussed my, my discussions about this with everyone involved who needs to talk about it. I'm not saying anything that's confidential. I'm, I'm not going to reveal any confidential information, but the public documents show that why this happened atf has snitches that are convicted felons that are working as confidential informants that try to goad you into doing shit so and what it's i'll read right from the military times article yep court documents show that beginning in october 2021 a confidential source with a history of felon felony convictions contacted our guy at the direction of atf officials to purchase a thompson submachine gun parts kit over the course of next six months, the, the sailor sold thousands of dollars worth of weapons components via an email address from his company, Black Dog Arsenal. Perfect. So all of this is down to this snitch, which is like, that's, look, I, I, I calls, him, calls him like I sees him. That's a snitch. Trying to manufacture, right? ATF told this snitch to try to just get something from this guy. Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's not like the guns were showing up in Mexico or something, or that he was like selling actual guns, but they they had a hard on for this guy for some reason, and he was convicted on all counts. And on top, there's so many problems with this case. All right, issues are preserved for appeal, and I'm working on this, and I'm I'm involved with with the, with the team here, and so I want you guys, you watchers, to to know if you think that this was wrong to convict a guy for having parts kits uh for having nonsense that you buy at the like it's the bodega crap that you buy at the gun show the wall hanger stuff dude we we pretty much every collector that i know has at least had or they do currently have parts kits in their possession yep. that were deemed okay by the ATF at yep. one point or the other well, you guys, if if you are concerned about this, I need you to go to givesendgo.com slash black dog arsenal, all all one B L A C K D O G A R S E N A L and and donate to this to help fund the appeal and 
and you know everything that's going on in this case. This is a really good kid. And here I'll, I'll show the give send go here. This is look at this kid. There's does that look like a bad guy? No, he's a collector like us. Exactly. That's the thing. He's a he's a collector. He likes. Oh, cool! I can get parts kits, and people can make B fongs or whatever the hell, and then if right. they want to rebuild it, they can do a form one. You know, or whatever, maybe or yeah, maybe he'll semis. build them semi auto. Maybe That's one day I mean. he'll have an SOT. Maybe who knows? Right? Who knows? But like parts kits alone. Okay, so we're 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 led to believe that there's millions more criminals in the U.S. now, according to the ATF, because not only do they own guns, oh my God, we can't have the the citizens owning guns, but oh my God, if they own parts kits, that's another fucking felony. It's like, what are you doing here? It's what are you trying to accomplish? I think this is the most, and I was so emotional when it came, like to find out that somebody convicted a guy on this. That a jury, you know, mm -hmm. convicted people. Well, but here's the thing is people don't, th the problem is like, no, I'm not going to get too deep into this rant, but like mm -hmm. the problem is the lack of familiarity with firearms in general of the American population. And if people understood what a parts kit was versus an actual fire or an actual machine gun, we'll just go that route. Right. Um. Even though we can get into that, I think, I'm a very pro staunch proponent of the second amendment. Like, you know, this, we've talked about this before. I think it's absolute. If you want to own a machine gun, go for it. If you fuck up with it, I think there should be penalties like with anything else. If you're dumb with it and you hurt somebody or you mm -hmm. damage property. Okay. The penalties should be there because you're being dumb, but because well, because you're hurting people or taking their stuff. Correct. Correct. <laughs> like, right. Exactly. But like, as far as owning a machine gun, owning a fucking rocket launcher, I don't care if you own a fucking RPG. Don't hurt mm -hmm. anybody with it. If you want to go out in your 800 acres and just blow shit up, go for it. Do right. your thing. So I think the Second Amendment is absolute. So to get that out of the way, um, people don't know the difference between anything with firearms. Nowadays, like the general population. And that really, it's really disturbing to me that people don't understand that because even, even about 50, 60 years ago, most of the population... Was, were very familiar with firearms. Just right. And we're not talking about like the, you know, the AR-15s, the FALs and the cool shit, you know, the fun shit. But hey, I have- It was what was common at the time. Right. Yeah. And I know how to like handle it properly. I know how to not fucking shoot somebody or myself with it. And bam, it was just kind of ingrained in our culture of like, here's how you handle a firearm, right? Right. Now it's like they, you could literally put a fucking BB gun or an airsoft gun in front of somebody and be like, what caliber is that? And they'd be like, I don't know. You'd be like, it's a BB gun. It's mm -hmm. 177 or 22, most likely 177. And they're like, oh, it's a BB gun? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, you know. Unless you're in New York where it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. For fucks. Well, that, that, yeah, we'll get to that. But like, um, well, yeah. But you know but what I mean? Anyway, like the, that, the familiarity. So the jury, yeah. they're not going to understand based on the prosecution what a machine gun actually is according right. to the ATF. And they, they just keep saying machine gun, machine gun, machine gun. They see war movies. They're like, oh, well, that's that's pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's literally a parts kit. It's a it's a box of parts. Right. It's a bag of parts with, with a non-functional like part of the fire. It, it doesn't work. Right. You have to rebuild it and whatever. Like, but they don't understand. They hear machine gun or they yeah, and they're like, why gun. would you want that? Right. Why right. would you and even have that? That's a problem. Yeah, and, yeah. and that that's 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 what I'm getting at is like. Americans have become scared of guns mm -hmm. and therefore you get a lot more fuck ups. You get a lot more people that are not familiar with them in general. That's why I said, I'm not going to go too deep into this rant, but like, that's why I think that jury convicted him is because they were, they're just so uninformed and they keep hearing machine gun, machine gun, machine gun, rocket launcher, grenade launcher, anti-tank yeah. missile, whatever. And then they, it's scary to them. It's like, well, it shouldn't be totally scary to the average American, in my opinion. You should hear that and be like, okay, what did he have it for? Okay, was he hurting like, people? Oh, with it? parts? Right. Oh, it was just, oh, it was just a parts kit. Well, yeah, like, what am I doing here? It, was, it wasn't even <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, well, what did he have it for? Was he hurting people or was he just selling guns? And, like, that's, in my ah. opinion, how it should be is like, oh, if he's ah. just selling them. Who gives a fuck? Why are we here? But right. it's not and whatever. That's in a utopian American world.
so um but yeah it's that's my opinion on that it's like it's fucking ridiculous so yeah please yeah if you guys are watching go ahead and try to help out any way you can yeah with this guy because it and i love how the military threw him under the fucking bus immediately immediately just 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 goes yep this guy's a sailor he's been a sailor for many years um nothing bad in his record that we can see so far um as far as i'm aware there's not even like a parking ticket no, but that's what I mean. Like, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to, I don't want to speak. Well, like we were just absolutely. talking about TI, right? This guy, now he's facing 10 years on each count. Oh, now he is? Well, I mean, it, it, he hasn't been sentenced, but this guy, who's a regular guy, didn't oh, hurt yeah, anybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's a regular dude like you and I. Yep. And 10 and years like, on each count. Yeah. Fucking Christ. So, guys, if you can help, give, send, go, slash, uh, black dog arsenal. Yep, and just help out any way you can, and let's let's get this guy let's get this guy back with his family. Let's get this you know this nightmare over if we can. And not a fucking dishonorable discharge out of the military. Just get him oh, out. Like, not even yeah, not even to go there. It's ridiculous. Well, it's the Twenty-eight like, years old. Yeah, and he and he's still in the military. And it's like if he gets a dishonorable plus he's been in prison, the guy is unemployable, and it, it sucks. Yep. It's like for nothing, for for, for, for nothing. And it's didn't like, hurt nobody. That's fucking, it's great. Yeah, and and yeah, that that's just uh, it's it's astounding to me how fucked up things are. It's and so it's, immoral. It's so dis- yeah. It's oh. really disgusting. I'm I'm so sickened by this whole thing. Yeah, it's so. it, it, that's that's a good way to put it. You're sickened because I am too. I'm like, it just makes me feel like what the like that could happen to you or me or any mm-hmm. anybody that's watching this or listening to this. Anybody who's a collector who's got parts slaying around. Right. And it's like, like, it's just, it's just, it's, it's stupid. And it's not fear because I'm not scared of those fuckers. It's sickening because it's like, how could somebody, like you said, it's immoral. How could Mm -hmm. somebody in their mind rationalize and follow through with executing a fucking order like this? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, how how did the Nazis happen? How did the communists happen? Uh, it's so hard to understand if you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it just, oh, I'm just following orders. Oh, I have to justify my job. I have to have my paycheck. Right. Oh, so I'm going to, I'm going to persecute somebody <clears throat> who's not guilty of anything. Right. So from what I've seen, I'm just going to persecute them because I, I need to justify my position in the bureau, yeah. in the party, you know, whatever. And that, that that's so fucked up to me, and it's sickening. Yeah, it really is sickening. You're right. Good word. So yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on because I mean, yeah. I could just I could just talk about it. I was like, I yeah, know I know, day. I know, I know. Um, yep. But so now, thank you to one of the sponsors of today's uh, podcast. It's Tac Pack. Tac Pack is a tactical and EDC subscription box that delivers gear directly to your door each month that you will actually use. They offer two boxes, their standard box, which for November will have $111 worth of gear for only $49.95, and their plus box, which will have $255 worth of gear uh, from brand names such as Battle Arms Development, Luthayar, and Cross Machine and Tool, just to name a few. If you use the promo code WEEK, that's week, that's the promo code specific to this show, our exclusive code, you'll get at least $70 of free gear when you have a new subscription. Uh, So if you get the plus pack, that means you'd get over $325 worth of gear. And I know a a few of you have have already signed up using the code, and I'm not sure. uh, I know that you have to subscribe by October 31st to get the November box. So I'm not sure if the box you've gotten so far was your just exclusive extra for using the week code, or if that was the November box yet, I'm going to find out more about that. But thank you to Tac Pack for sponsoring the show. It's really interesting, cool looking gear. I love what came in my box. And uh, I'm sure you did. It, it, well, yeah, I got, I got the axe and some other stuff. Just, but just make yeah, sure you don't have, you don't have a, an inert grenade like was shown on the picture. <laughs> but Whoops. yeah. So, so yeah, I'd be going to prison again. for a long time if they if they enforce that. So thank you again to TACPAC, T-A-C-P-A-C-K dot com. <laughs> All right, next up we've got another just wonderful thing. This is a 
Rashida Talib, who is a yeah, Rashida. Uh, yes. yes, that's that's where I knew the name from. Yeah, okay, Rashida. Yeah, fun fun a, woman. Yep, or a government person. I, I assume I assume their gender. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, yeah. I don't, well, no. I. I yeah. You know, whoops. Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. But yeah. Anyway. Listen, yeah, so. she's calling on the Biden administration to rein in this whole ghost gun thing, right? <laughs> It's a problem. They've been, you know, there's been at least one of them that were used in a crime. So, oh boy, wrote this letter dated yesterday, which is so hilariously off and stupid and signed by all these other li lizards, Rashida Tlaib, Jamal Bowman, Adriana Espia, Anne Kirkpatrick, Sheila Jackson Lee, Bonnie Watson Coleman, and Andre Carson, who just had, is the only one who didn't ink sign, which is cute. Um, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, this is the, them basically begging the Biden administration to add the uh, the code and and designs for 3D printable guns to the USML and make it illegal to distribute them online. <clears throat> uh, and then they say some really stupid stuff. At the moment, it is illegal to own a ghost gun. However... Mm -hmm. Because the 3D printed codes can be legally distributed. Americans can legally manufacture the parts and create their own illegal gun that is completely untraceable and incredibly dangerous. Ooh, and uh, she's missing a small thing. There's a small issue here. They're not there's illegal. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a couple. I, yeah. That's why I scoffed at like, it's illegal to own a ghost gun. It's like, no, it's not. Right. It, <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. It's... it's Listen, anyone with access to a 3D printer can download this code, print a gun, and cause incredible harm. This phenomenon has been the cause of mass shootings and daily violence across the country, and it will continue to occur if nothing is done. Now, despite the fact that that is not true and no 3D printed oh, guns have been used. Yeah, they, they've found some in the homes of people who have done crimes, but I mean, not that that matters anyway. Uh, this is just, this is just so stupid. Like, it, you're so far out of touch with reality yeah. and the average person, because you think you're you're so much higher and and you know qualified and oh I, I'm in the government so I know more than it's like you don't know shit. Yeah, about, and it's like especially with firearms. Like that's the thing is like there are, there are a very small like I could probably come on one hand or me possibly two in the government that actually understand firearms and like federal government level I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Um uh and that I actually understand firearms and like know about them, know what 3D printed receivers and frames are. Okay. They don't hold weight because these idiots are like, they could just cold print a whole Glock 17. It's like, well that's not yeah. how it works, retard. And even if it did, who cares? Yeah, who gives a fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's like if i'm if i'm if i'm literally 3d printing a firearm why the fuck would i want to waste the rest of my life knowing how awesome it was to just 3d print a firearm to go to prison because i murdered somebody or hurt somebody right it's so fucking cool to print a fucking uh, <laughs> firearm on, on a 3d printer it's awesome it's amazing when it goes out and it works it's like shit but you also yeah. have to buy some metal components we don't have to but you you definitely need some metal components you can't just print a firearm that'll work regularly, repeatedly, and consistently and reliably. You could, I mean, you could do it, but like, or you, you could do like the the one or two shot, you know, go. But like, right. who gives a fuck? They they dropped liberators in France in World War II. How often were they used? Never. Right. So it's like, who gives a fuck about that? But like, no, they don't understand. Like, if they if they were to come to me and be like, so what is involved? What is the process involved in printing a three D gun? I'd be like. Yeah, so I have an AR-15 parts kit, right? I'm going to print this lower receiver, and I'm going to show you exactly what I have to do to assemble it and then go out and shoot it and blah, blah, blah. They'd be like, oh, that's a lot of work involved, and it's yeah. fun, and it's kind of cool, and a lot of trial and error, and that's, okay, I get it. Well, and you're speaking were, from experience. You're somebody who fairly recently got into gun printing, right? Last year, because of you guys, and I, I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been, I've been playing with the with the idea. I was just like, eh, whatever, maybe down the road. And then, you know, you guys convinced me to like the guys on your on your Discord server, which you should fucking join. Definitely, mm -hmm. it's fun as shit. Um, 
sans a couple of uh select characters but they know who they right. are anyway um but no it, it's like you guys pushed me over the edge and i was like okay fine i'm just gonna fucking do it i fucked up so many times ask you guys questions annoying the shit out of you guys but then once you get your first successful build it's like this is fucking awesome it's so mm -hmm. fun the last goddamn thing on my mind is oh i want to go shoot up a fucking mall or a, or a store or <laughs> that's the last thing I'm, I'm just like i want to i want to just have fun you know like i just want to go out and have fun it's fun shooting firearms most americans that own firearms would agree it's fun, you know, except for the FUDs. They're like, that's right. only for hunting, you know, you know, it can't be having any guns for nothing under order and hunting. What know? do you need 17 rounds for? Yeah, is what do you need 17 deer... bullets in that clip for, Sonny? What's you the know? deer gonna got a Kevlar on him? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna shoot back at you, you know, you yeah. fucking Christ. But no, it, shooting guns is fun. That's the whole reason we like it. It's because it's, co it's collectability, it's tangible history for those mm -hmm. of us who are surplus nerds. If you're not, and you just like ARs and fucking whatever else. Yeah, then, fun. I mean, you're kind of a weirdo, but. Well, says the guy with the G41 on his wall, so. No, I'm saying you're a weird. I think people are weird who only have modern guns. Well, I, I don't. It's like, if you want to have firearms and you're proficient and safe with them, I don't have a problem with what you're No, I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm yeah. saying, like, people who have, like, 20 ARs and only have that. Yeah. I'm always just like, why don't you get something cool? Yeah, well. why don't you get some fun, yeah. like different, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. At I least an AK. I know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Um, and it's like it doesn't have to be a surplus gun. It could just be like get a fucking Colt single action army, something like yeah. that. You know, just like fuck around with different platforms. Like, yes, you're proficient as shit. You go out there with your Gucci AR on the yeah. range, and you got the the fucking Chris yeah. Costa fucking you know long yeah. grip on there, and <laughs> oh, you're you're fucking hitting it at the three gun. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, but, you did it. But it's fun to fuck around with different firearm platforms because it's it's just technology it's like people that have modern computers and people that love like retro computers yeah like gaming systems it's like yeah the the fucking nintendo the nes is like a piece of shit to today's standards mm -hmm. but it's still fun it's like this actually works it works yeah. it entertains you it's cool to like try it out at least you know yeah no it's just like we were talking about the g41 i got yeah it uses the germans were obsessed with not having a hole in the barrel for a semi-auto right. So they came up with this cockamamie scheme to make it function. And you shoot it and it feels different and it sounds different and everything's yep. just different. It's just a cool experience. So it, exactly. It, it's like uh, cars too. Like we can go to cars. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. you know, I don't know shit about cars, but like, it's like, do you want to just drive your fucking 2014 fucking Toyota? Toyota Prius? Yeah. Like, I mean, seriously, like it, it's, it's fine. It works. Like they work. Yeah. Right. But like, do you want to try something else? Like if somebody, I, again, not a car guy, but like if somebody goes, Hey, do you want to try and drive this? Well, it's a five speed. I'm like, yeah, I know how yeah. to drive that. They're like, Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. And it's like fun. You know, it's like yeah. different, you know, it's like fucking, Oh, this is really cool. I wouldn't necessarily want to own one, but it's fun. You know, it's cool. I respect the fact that you like it and it exists. Right. Yeah, that's exactly. How I, yeah. So that's kind yeah. of how I feel about firearms and for sure. And Yeah. So anyway, we can move on. I'm sorry, I went off. So yeah, we were talking answer. about a lot of DIY stuff, and so I just like to do a quick word from another sponsor, which is MAF Corporation. MAF is the manufacturer de armes et carillon de Floride, and the, they have a lot of great deals on AR-15 parts right now. Uh, got a bunch of of Blem parts. You can, we're talking about a Blem bolt carrier group. What is it? Complete bulk carry group, $42.69. Mm -hmm. Got Blem uppers for under $25. Uh, we're talking AR parts that are just cheap as chips. Yeah, there might be something a little wrong with them, but who cares? Well, it's aesthetic uh, though, right? Well, the AR parts are just AR parts. Right, but like the, the only thing wrong with them is aesthetic, right? Oh, I mean, probably. But there's <laughs> And then there's also non, there's non Blem parts. Like you get a, yeah. a straight up AR bulk carrier group. Nothing wrong with it. 69 69 nice oh, so check out weird. maf that's maf that's uh mama alpha foxtrot dash arms.com and you can use promo code frn foxtrot romeo november to get five percent off your order i mean look we got aluminum air handguards magnesium handguards bipods all this stuff and for those of you who are really into diy you can check out the wind chime kits the wind chimes are awesome I, i'm actually yeah. a customer of you yeah. 
or shit. Uh, no, I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually a customer of math. Yeah, math. Um, yeah, definitely a different guy. That, you know, and also I, I, I've I've uh, purchased wind chime kits. They sound great. Um, they're very resistant to the weather. It's good stuff. <laughs> Check out the tack chime. Tack chime. Have you seen this? Uh, it's like a modern version of the tech nine. Very cool. Only three left in stock with the eight inch resonator tube. <laughs> So yeah, check it out. It's maf-arms.com. Promo code FRN gets you 5% off of your order. All right, moving on now. Um, the story. The story. Yeah, you, you mentioned this earlier, and I did not do any digging, so I'm coming into it blind. Mayor and parents horrified. Seven-year-old was able to bring loaded gun to George, Dorchester School. This is in... Uh, Boston. Boston it's, Mayor Michelle Wood said the person who allowed a seven-year-old access to a loaded gun and bring it to school needs to be held accountable. Police were called to the Up Academy Holland School on Only Street in Dorchester at 3.30 after a staff member found the gun in the student's backpack. It was removed safely. No shots were fired. No one was hurt. That's surprising that no no shots are fired because yeah, it's unclear but, if the student was in school or whether anyone will face any charges. But uh, the quote is, "A child does not just get a gun, and none of our kids should be able anywhere near weapons, much less directly put in danger like this." We're going to make sure there's accountability," the mayor said. "I'm <laughs> speechless. I don't have words. This is truly devastating," said Boston per Sup Boston Public School Superintendent Mary Skipper. In a statement, we have to ask ourselves how a very young student becomes in possession of and gains access to a firearm. It feels like these Boston politicians are talking through an AI. Yeah, like Dragon. They're still using Dragon, you know, from like fucking yeah. 10 years ago, 12 years yeah. ago. Just fucking talking into it and like, oh, uh, 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 I like tater tots. Yeah. Um, but like, okay, so let's break this down real quick. Boston is in what state? Massachusetts. Yes. And they have really lenient gun laws. Like there's there's no gun control whatsoever. So it's this story doesn't surprise me that they have access to all these guns everywhere on the streets, right? Like so Massachusetts is really good on their gun control, right? Yeah, here on let me check. Let me check the rating from Giffords. Uh <laughs> see uh, like we should expect a, like an F minus rating. <laughs> uh, Giffords. It's a great place to go to find out. Apparently, you're not allowed to access it. Anyway, no, they have a very high rating. It's like an A or a B. For 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 gun rights? No, for gun. This is Giffords. Oh, oh shit! Gun control. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, my point is like, um, it's very weird that uh, a state that has like extremely explicitly fucking retarded quote-unquote gun control yeah would be surprised at something like this you know what do you funny. mean it's but... like well i mean okay again we'll go back to my previous statement that i said earlier in this hey if more people were familiar with firearms and responsible with them because it's part of just our culture and like our right. education everybody just yeah hey because when i was seven years old that's when i started shooting right yeah at at people right oh yeah yeah definitely yeah, the, <laughs> the, the fucking pop cans that we had set up you know in the berm were de uh, yeah exactly um but no i was taught at seven years old i was i was shown exactly what a firearm felt like what it could do and my first gun that i ever shot in my life was my dad's um glock 17 gen 1 which is fun mm -hmm. he still has that Cool piece. It's, of still, it's still in one piece. It hasn't disintegrated. No, he's put <laughs> he's put so many fucking rounds to that like training shooting. But like um anyway, so that was the first gun I ever shot at seven years old. And I felt the power, and he he constantly told me, do not ever point that at somebody, at a person, all right. And he mm -hmm. showed me how to be careful with it to myself, keep your finger off the trigger, blah blah. And I was seven years old. Right. And the difference between that seven-year-old and me is 
I knew to not ever fucking touch that thing unless my dad was there and explicitly said it's okay to pick this up. Listen, I don't understand. How, I just I looked it up. Massachusetts has an A minus from Giffords. They they have five <laughs> out of fifty gun safety rank, and this includes a safe storage law. It, right, right. That's so I don't know how they did this. That's well, why we need to investigate. I think they're right. We do need to investigate to see how this could possibly happen. <laughs> oh, you're correct. You're correct. Yeah, because it's 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 impossible. It's impossible. The yeah, guns were required to be locked from the child. Yep. It's the laws work, man. Just like nobody in Massachusetts probably drives drunk because they no, have such they don't stiff do that. laws. So, yeah, they, yeah, they don't. No, that's not a thing. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Because the law, the law was written, and therefore people don't do it. It's obvious. Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it doesn't. You don't even need to discuss such things. This is absurd. So we're going to put our top researchers on this. We're going to determine how it's possible that a seven-year-old was able to do this, and we're going to see. We're going to have yeah. to hang at least ten people publicly. I think. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to because um, it baffles the shit out of me how. You know, you but know. you know, you know how this happened, because young kids find a way into everything yeah no matter what it's their job yes like <laughs> their job is to find out how to disable like like is to find a paper clip and try to try desperately to get to a, a electrical socket or a fork in my case but hey yeah. um, or no no it was a butter knife it wasn't a fork it was a butter knife. <laughs> i was actually i had class so yeah, yeah fuck you guys um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, so this happened, and here's the thing is, okay, so the parents forgot to lock up or secure that firearm, right? Which I think, I think honestly, like, if you're a parent, right, like, when I become a parent someday, right, my kid will not have I access. I thought you didn't want kids. No, that's not me you're talking to, this, oh. like, most of your people on Discord. Um, but, uh, no, it's... um. I will make sure that I will secure my firearms and knives and shit as much as possible because of what you just said. It's a kid's job. It was my job. It was your job to get into everything, right? right? It is your job. You, you discover, you find ways. I found out how to break into my dad's, you know, um, room, like not his locker is his, cause he was a cop, but like, right. so he had all this shit in a locker that was also locked behind the locked door. I found out how to break into that locked door. But I couldn't, I couldn't figure out yeah. how a, a master lock work, you know, like the right. numbers and shit. So that was good. But um, no, it's like I will try my absolute best. So is that kid a mass shooter? No, I don't it's think probably. So. I'd say most likely is an idiot kid. But an also, is it possible to show people his gun? Right, or his, that, his that he found. Gun. And guess what? Probably because the media is constantly talking about guns and how yes. people who possess guns are. You know, more powerful than the great Satan. Right. And, right. But on right. top of that, is it likely that, you know, it, it it is Boston. So this is a, you know, a culture that has challenges. You know, they're not. <laughs> That's they're not nice understatement. But yeah, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah they're not a people. Uh, so. Whoops. <laughs> I was getting there. They're just very rude and stupid. But yeah, these, it's it's likely that they didn't have this conversation with their children. Correct. You know, it's it's possible. But I don't know. At the end of the day, this was as I was searching for story. This story came up like twenty eight times. Oh, because it's easy. It's easy. Fucking. It's easy rage bait for people. Yeah. Who are like, this is why we have to fucking have more gun control. It's like, yeah, this no, is why we need to disable guns and make them like right. storm in a community no. vault or something. And it's the gun that there was a problem. And it's like, uh, and the parent, it's like, okay, in a per honestly, in my opinion, yes, I would actually give the parents a fine. I would not, I would not do any criminal charges. I would not do anything like that. I'd just be like, you fucked up. Here's a fine. Be be more responsible. Okay. I don't even know if a fine is appropriate. I feel like just community like a, a big and, community and, and, shame campaign well but are, are we beyond that i think we've been beyond that point for a, right. 150 years or so <laughs> yeah where anybody even knows or cares about anyone in their community right it's as much as i hate government it's like if they want the government to intervene no criminal charges just go you have a fine for like 150 or 200 bucks 
that goes, you need to secure your firearms so your kid doesn't fucking walk into school with one. Well, and how about this? A fine, and they take the gun and raffle it off to all the parents whose kids didn't bring the gun to school. Ooh. <laughs> But that, that's that's a, that's an asset forfeiture, and I don't agree with that. Like, I I do not agree with it on principle, but I do well, think it so would be funny if the so, yeah, yeah it is. I, mean, I think it would be funny yeah. if you took the gun and and gave it to another gun owner. <laughs> <Rattling>. <laughs> yeah, it's like, all right, that, that would be fucking funny. But like anyone can enter the gun raffle for this idiot. Here's the thing: is like like I was saying earlier, is like I want I want everybody in the U.S. to be able to have a gun. You also need to be responsible with it and learn it. And if you're if you're a dipshit with it. Uh, shit happens. Your kid's going to fucking right. find something that you forgot about, whatever. They're going to grab it, a knife, fucking whatever, and stick it in the socket. I get that. Like, it's not that. But, like, I would say as far as a firearm, because that's a little bit, it could do a little bit more damage than a knife. Contrary to popular belief, mm -hmm. uh, it actually can. Um, I, I would say at, at most a fine or, like you said, I that that's what I would actually ideally like is a public shaming going – Wow, you need to get your shit together, bud. And then it would yeah. convince the other people in the neighborhood to go, well, fuck, I better put my... Or what if, away. okay, so what if the public shame campaign was, uh, there was a, a shooting competition, everyone could come in, and the uh, the parent had to give the gun to the winner. <laughs> yeah, because that's not technically a... Uh, well, who, who would enforce them giving the gun to... That's the thing is like uh, yeah it would I mean this is I, I'm just being creative. But the community, but, uh, the yeah. no, the community would enforce it, not the government. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So in that case, and yeah, so everyone I mean, would just be like, "Why didn't you give the gun to John?" Right, John won right, the competition. Right. So that, in that <laughs> case, I'm fine with it. If yeah. the community does it, it's it's less shitty, right? Um, than if the government said you have to do this, right? So yeah, yeah, I actually I'm on board with that, but like yeah, it's so it's shitty. He brought the gun to school, right? I'm glad nobody got hurt. To be honest, like all joking aside, I'm right. glad nobody got hurt because we didn't know if it there's was definitely a failure though. If your kid brings oh, a yeah. firearm to school, you have failed in a parent in some way. Whether it's yep. that the child was not mentally ready to right. learn gun safety, and if you have a child that is not mentally ready to learn gun safety and is also of, at that age, you know, five to to seven years old, where you can start picking locks, right? right. Which you and I both did when yep. we were <laughs> that oh, fuck age. Yeah, fuck yeah. Then you need to really secure your stuff. Yeah, and that's the thing is it's it's on the parent. But here's the thing is like the yeah. parent shouldn't be crucified for one. No, fuck. just made fun of. Just made yeah. publicly shamed. Like yeah. again, we, I think we need to bring shame back into our our culture as as Americans. Like there's right. no shame. It's a like, ghost up shaming. It's like you deserve it. Yeah. You fucking deserve it. You fucked up. You're gonna be shamed. It's not it's not permanent. Right. But it's like right now you need and you to have an opportunity to redeem yourself. Right, and you need to feel yeah. that feeling so you don't fucking do it again. Right. It doesn't mean the government has to come in and say, oh, yeah, you, you're being charged criminally for this, this, and this, and this. That doesn't work. That just right. adds another stress that you're – whatever. And, like – but public shaming and, like, the community shaming is something that we've gotten so far away from. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with, say, firearm handling and ownership. It's like, yeah, if some kid is walking around a town in colonial America, right, in the 1600s with a gun, and they're just, like – they're obviously not trained with it, whatever. They're just right. fucking around. Somebody gets to get away and be like, oh, I know who your dad is. We're going to go over there and everybody's going to know that you right. fucked up and, and let your kid have access to a gun. Nothing is Well, actually, in that era, technology. in that era, if they were more than like seven years old, they'd be like, silly, this is how to hold it. True. <laughs> true. True. But like, you know what I mean? Like a small child. Like, right. you know, but it's like the public shaming is like, yeah, shit. Well, what, what were you doing? Oh, shit. I, I left it out. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then you go, okay, I won't leave it out again. And then the shaming has yeah. gone after fucking however many days. And then you move on and you learn. And then that, yeah. that's how it works. Uh, there's no fine. There's no government involved. There's no fucking sheriff coming over to you going, hey, you got to pay a fine. You know, And you have to go. We have to lock you in our special box for three months. <laughs> special box. Yep. Yeah. Because you fucked up and blah, blah, blah. No, it's none of that. But uh, no, it, I'm glad the story didn't have any harm. Right. Like nobody got hurt. I'm really glad. But it's like, how did a seven-year-old get to get? Well, it's. How did a seven year old yeah. get a fucking butter knife and bring it to school? Or the ones that have like run people down with cars and things, you know, like that. It just happens. When I was just... three years old, I actually totaled my dad's squad car in our driveway. What? Yeah. How did he, you do it? So he, I know this is a tangent and whatever, but yeah. like this is relevant, right? Because he was, he was publicly shamed for this for years. <laughs> He had come home. He worked in the same town that we lived in. He's the chief of police. And right. 
So he came home for like two or three minutes to grab something, right? And I, my mom was in the bathroom and I was just kind of like, oh, that's cool. And I jumped in. I put my seatbelt on. Before <laughs> it was even a ticketable offense, right? Yeah. And I, have, I put my seatbelt on and I just, I couldn't see above the fucking steering wheel. I put the son of a bitch in reverse. And you just, neighbors, yeah, you're just mimicking your dad. Right. Exactly. Like, this is what he and does. Click. So the neighbors were moving their dead mom's stuff out of their house. And they had their like nineties, like minivan, like their square box. I forgot what it was. It was like a, a Chrysler or something. Yeah. And so I just hit the gas and I went back and then <sighs> boom, it, the vehicle stopped and I just threw it in drive and I went forward and I hit our van into the garage and pushed it <laughs> forward. I was like, Oh, it stopped. And then I just did it again. And I, and all of a sudden uh, the neighbor woman came out, she got me out of the car and she went into the, my, my parents' house or our house. And she was like, hello. And my mom's mm. on the toilet. Right. This this happened in like yeah. forty five seconds. It wasn't right. that long. And my mom was like, "Uh, hi." And then she got up and she's like, "Uh, we have a problem." And then my mom goes out. My dad goes up from the basement getting it, you know, stuff that he needed for work and everything. And he's like, "Oh, oh, oh, my god!" And like it was just like this total fiasco. <laughs> so they'd have state patrol come and do the investigation, you know, and all that stuff. And it was funny, but like, yeah, I totaled my dad's car, and I was three years old. Three years old. Three years old. old. Three years old. Yeah. How did you get no to shit. the gas? I, I, I literally, I, I do actually remember doing this. I just went down as far as I could until my foot hit the pedal. I could not see above half the steering wheel. And so when I felt it stop, that's when I dropped it into, you know, drive and reverse and went back and forth. So oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> so yeah, three year olds can drive a fucking vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, yeah, because like the next time my dad went into work, because like obviously the thing was totaled, it was fucked. Right. And um, next time my dad went into work, they're like, "Oh, how'd you get here? Did kid drive you here?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so three year olds, if I can drive a squad car at right. three years old, I'm pretty sure I can pick up a firearm or a knife or some other shit like that. Yeah. And um, you know, do some damage. And that's the thing is like, yeah parents you can't always fucking be there that's the thing that's another like fallacy is you can't expect parents to be right. there all the time to like okay maybe i forgot to secure a handgun after i came back from the range for five seconds and then he threw it in his bag and i forgot about it who give whatever mm -hmm. but yeah anyway uh sorry to go on a tirade about no, you're that good. like a rant but like uh no it's again glad nobody got hurt i the reason or the fact that they can't understand this just says a lot about like the culture there is like right you can't understand how a child could take something and just think it's cool and want to show their friends or their mm -hmm. teachers, you know, who knows, and just throw it in their backpack. And then the parents just, they're keeping track of so much other shit that they can't, like, I don't know. That, yeah. that, that's weird. And they're, they're now using it to, oh, we need more gun control. It's like, what the fuck right. is that going to solve? What's, what's it going to do? Well, I'll tell you, there is somebody in the community that is a, a good member that does do shaming and takes care of all that stuff. And it's our sponsor, vzgrips.com. This is a wonderful Florida company whose products are centered around their G10 alloy. We've got really awesome grips for various firearms and also knives. Uh, mm. so we've got here the VZ Executive Hydra G10 dagger, which is available in whatever weird ass color you want. Uh, and some good colors like hyena brown and black. Uh, one of my favorite things that they have is this uh is their pencil the vz pencil you can't write with this though <laughs> it's a stabberator <laughs> i have like and i have poked this into you know some very hard fruits and uh it, it holds up i i very much like the stabberator pencil that's awesome that's so awesome. let's look at some of their grips <laughs> that's awesome man so what what gun, right? We got the most popular guns here. We got the the 1911, the Revolver, the Beretta, CZ75, semi-autos. What should we click on, Mike? Let's do the uh, two world wars. Okay, 1911. Yep. And as Othias told us, these guns are good for one 911 emergency. <laughs> uh, so what do you want, full-size compact or palm swell? Let's do full-size. Let's do full-size. Full size. Let's see what they got right. there. Look, the operator with the thumb cut. We got the double diamond, the alien. Got a lot of, geez, wow, look at how many different options. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's a funny thing, Love it. 
I actually go up, go up, Matt, go up to the blue one with. The oh, wait, hold on, they got a fake wood one. Yeah, that's see, cool. no, no, we're finding yeah. shit that's awesome. Yeah, like not that the other shit's not. But go down, go, no, 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 go down, go down. The one with the uh, thumb cut out, the blue one right there, the recon. Recon. That's actually five bucks. That's actually a cool ass standard color, thickness. Man. Bobtail, and then you can get all these colors. Like Warple. Mm-hmm. Predator green. Predator yeah military brown marsock mars <laughs> hyena <laughs> brown which is what i like earth brown they got a sort of dirty olive that's blue bad, black the blue it's, the blue is that's what yeah, i would get honestly blue black that's oh i fucking love that that's amazing that's weak. why would you get that why would you get the blue black because i love it so you could, you, it's got thin blue lines all over it oh <laughs> didn't see that one coming but yeah no um, no, it is I'll, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll show like, you my uh, my MP45 after we're done here. I'll show you why I yeah, think that's right cool. On. Even though it's, it's probably gay as AIDS, but like. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, go to vzgrips.com. They support the show. They provide great products. They are a Florida company and use the yep. coupon code THISWEEK15. That's all one word. T-H-I-S-W-E-E-K-1-5. Get yourself a discount courtesy of us. Thank you, VZ Grips. All right. So... Oregon is considering doing a gun control. Yeah. How's, uh, yeah. Isn't that nice? So it would, it's just a simple couple of common sense things. Universal background checks. I mean, that's obvious. Um, that all gun, or, gun owners would have to do a hands on misinformation class. Um, oh, oh, oh. They get it's... fingerprinted. And uh, and of course you you need a permit to purchase a gun if, if you get this. Sounds like Minnesota. And no mags over ten rounds because that's just silly. Well, they yeah. want to outdo Minnesota then because yeah, yeah. The that's legislation insane. would finally address gun violence head on. And I'm sure that I'm sure the gun related crime would drop a whopping. I mean, let, let's be honest here. It would drop like probably about a whopping zero point zero one percent. Yeah, maybe a tenth of a, maybe a tenth. So, I mean, it's worth it, right? To do all this shit and, again, justify your job and the well, government. Well, again, and, and the only cost would be, you know, locking hundreds of people in cages. Um, right, right. Like, let's, you know. It's really cheap. Let's lock people up. I mean, Oregon, yeah, they've got, I'm pretty sure it's Oregon's got recreational marijuana, right? Oh, uh, yeah, no. Enough. So they've got the best source of uh, of information in this area. They've got high school students that are doing the you know the supporting of it and doing a rally students at grant high school yeah i'm sure they know what the fuck they're talking about yeah no because they're all of the age where they're paying taxes and able to purchase yeah. guns right we so should they, just sit we should just sit back and shut the fuck up man let the high schoolers take it over i mean because, i mean could it get any worse i mean really? why not i mean why not let, why like not? literally why not what the fuck um so oregon has recreational marijuana correct correct I think so. I, I forget. It's Washington or Oregon. I think it's Oregon has it. So they're losing revenue because they can't lock people up for having. You know, <laughs> so let's let's do this now and let's you know. Oh, you have a firearm and do you have a permit to carry that? A permit to purchase? Oh well, guess what? You're going to our special little box. Yep. They got to make up that revenue that. somehow. Yep. You know. And the box is lucrative because you know people generally do have to pay for their time in there. Uh, I did not know that, but I <laughs> was it with court fees and like restitution and fines. Um, and well, no, on top of that, there's usually in most states, there's a daily charge uh, for, for being your, in jail. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> let's let's cool. charge people that probably don't have a lot of money to begin with. Yeah. Plus their fucking their bond. Um, uh, let's just charge. The per day because we're we're not already charging the taxpayers to fund this no shithole. no we're not already doing that so it's it's all like a no. volunteer if you go to jail you have to pay for your own stay no the taxpayers are paying for the sheriff's cool car right yeah the, not the, the, the not the, the, the unmarked the unmarked three hundred fifty thousand dollar fucking yeah yeah the Corvette yeah. yeah not no not the not the these places these are you know this is a tenancy thing but yeah no, it's it's I hate, <laughs> Jesus Christ I hate the criminal justice system. Uh, well, it's it's just, it just got it's gotten so fucking self serving. That's the problem. It's like yeah. it's now a revenue based. Like, how can we make money? You know, and it's like, well, listen, I, yeah, I think it's put very clear 
here by Brady Wynn of the Gun Law Reform Club at Grant High School. I feel like it was really important to do this walkout to send a message like, hey, we too want a safe learning environment and we want freedom to walk the streets and not have to worry about guns or getting shot. Oh, that's big, Mr. Yeah, very, Wynn. Very, very well put, very eloquent. Um, yeah, Mr. Wynn, you're going. I guess I'm just going to shut the fuck up because, I mean, yeah. that was that was everything I was going to say. I mean, that's everything. You got me. You got me there. Very compelling fucking argument you had there. You're right. You shouldn't have to worry about it. Correct. You, you know, <laughs> that, that part was correct. That's it. Yeah. You shouldn't have yeah. to worry about somebody gunning you down in the streets. Yeah. You the also just shouldn't it? have to worry about, I don't know, an asteroid hitting you. Yeah, or a, or a car barreling down the fucking street because somebody's driving drunk. And yeah, or, they, or a three-year-old in a squad car. <laughs> Again, that's why I said it, because now it's like it's valid. Like, yes, yeah. a three-year-old in the squad car. If I would have actually got onto the street, God knows what I could have done. You know, I could have made the yeah. world a better place, or I could have made it a little bit of a worse place. Who knows? All right. Well, we've got we, – it's funny. We were talking earlier about, you know, states with, with high gun law rankings. Well, a New York City bus was hijacked. <laughs> yep. Uh, and this is just such a, a – just – it's good that nobody got hurt. Yeah. But so let's go through this adventure together. It was a man with what appeared to have a firearm. So this 44 year old man allegedly ran in front of a city bus on Thursday morning, jumped on board. Uh, the bus driver opened the door so passengers could get off. But then the man says, no, keep driving. So the bus drives for about 35 blocks. And then the driver jumps out the window <laughs> so 35 blocks he didn't you didn't think about that when it was initially happening that's cool right go, go ahead. well maybe go he ahead. turned around or something yeah and so then this this the suspect climbs over into the bus driver's seat to try to take control of the bus and hits a utility pole uh <laughs> where the nypd were there to you know do whatever it is they do uh and then they recovered the weapon at the scene which appears to be a BB gun, and that the suspect appeared to be erratic. Oh, weird. He appeared to be erratic. <laughs> and electrical boss. power in the area is expected to be out for at least three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, makes me want to, I, I just want to, you know, I, I, I've decided, Matt, I'm just going to fucking leave everything I have here and move to New York City. <laughs> yeah, this place is great. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic, yeah. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. Somebody points a fucking BB gun at me. I'm gonna I'm gonna consider it a real gun. No, That's for sure. Yeah. Would I drive 35 fucking blocks and then you decide to jump out of the window? Unless he was like, I mean, what the fuck happened? Uh, we don't know what happened. We weren't there, but like, and then he goes over the partition to like take control of this yeah. thing and hits a fucking light pole. Yeah, or a power pole. A See? power, yeah, whatever the fuck yeah. it is. I've never been there. I don't really want to go even though one of my friends it is smells like, oh, bad take you on a tour and i'm like yeah uh, it smells know. really bad you don't need to go yeah weird and a, yeah. a huge shithole city smells bad no way <laughs> yeah um yeah couldn't imagine um i'd rather smell cow shit where i'm at you know, yeah than, oh, there's uh, a different type of, of oh no it, it's piss yeah. it's fucking yeah. rotten food bo corpses sh human shit corpses rats you know whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rats. i've been to chicago I, i'm not that far from chicago so i've been pigeons there. that are so fat from all of the waste oh. that they can't fly yeah well exactly yeah they're and they're and the, you know people the corpses that they're feeding off of it's like <laughs> yeah they just they, they kind of like waddle they kind of just like waddle yeah. jump yeah it's fucking nasty little bastards yeah. but um no that that that's it took it took it took them thirty five blocks. Like so, okay. Let's just let's just go about. Well, this I think way. the main thing here is that New York has so much gun control, and like even bans like not only just BB guns, but oh yeah, like, anything. But water gel guns, those like, oh, like the gel blasters. Like... No, the little. It's this new thing where and and you can get like seven thousand of the pellets, and they're like this big, uh -huh. and and you put them in water, and they soak out to six millimeters. Okay. And they just like they hit you and they they're like uh, they're basically like boba like tapioca cubes. Like they small, hit you and they very, just go very Pop! small paintball. Yeah. 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 That's cute. So, so those no are illegal. Uh, <laughs> but 
but yeah, they have all of these. Thank you, dog. Well, cool it, dog. it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. There's no crime in New York City. Like, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be moving there. You know, if, if there was a lot of crime and there was just unchecked aggression and crime constantly in New York City, I would not be moving there. Because I made this no. decision right now. Like after we yeah. done with this, after we done with this talk. No, we're uh, both getting on the uh, on the Amtrak train. Yeah, we're, we're we gonna, don't need any the, of our things. Yep. Just gonna... No, we're just going to go there. Uh, you and I are going to rent a seven thousand dollar a month apartment. Yeah, two hundred fifty square smaller. feet. And yeah, yeah we're going to be living in a cubicle that has <laughs> shitty heat. That you know the the radiator bursts because it's one hundred and fifty years old. Yeah, uh, we're we're going to do that. That's that's our new life, Matt. Gonna that's our big. new life. We're going to go there because then, then, then we don't have to buy a real gun to hijack a, a fucking bus. We <laughs> Right. That's why we're going. That's the going reason we're going. Yeah, is because we will instill the fear of, of of. But we will still have to go underground to buy this BB gun. Yes. Well, we'll get it on our on our way there. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll, we'll pick up a bunch of BB guns. We'll be like the fucking the father on on Boondock yeah. Saints. We'll have the fucking the coat with yeah. all the different firearms. It's like yeah, gel blasters and BB guns. On it. Hey, dude, we're gonna take over that fucking that city. Yeah, we're gonna change. It, it should be easy at this point. Yeah, we'll just take it over with BB guns. That's that's <laughs> uh, it's my new my new life's goal. Like I'm excited. We're, we're gonna fucking do it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's fucking crazy how like no. What I was gonna say is like they, he went 35 blocks. And there's no possible like there's no like you know banks have like the panic button and shit. Right. If they're getting robbed, there's no possible button that a driver could press or the NYPD wouldn't realize looking into a bus. You know, actually being observant, doing your fucking what you're is supposed to be your job. Being right. observant, looking around, you wouldn't realize there's a guy holding a fucking gun up to a fucking driver of a bus for 35 fucking blocks. Yeah, I mean, 35 blocks in a big city. Yeah, that must, that's like three hours. <laughs> yeah, it, it's insane. It's like so no cops fucking saw that. No, no person saw that. Or if they did, they were just like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Like that's who, New York. That's New York. If you <laughs> I'm walking here. naked here. Yeah. <laughs> Give me my fucking pal mouth, you motherfucker. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, it, it's so ridiculous to me. Like, out here, if, if somebody was driving a, which we don't have buses out here because I'm fucking rural. If someone was driving through a small town holding a gun to somebody else's head, more than likely at least one person's going to go, huh, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. Like, why <laughs> would somebody be driving with a gun to their head? Yeah, I don't you do know, that. <laughs> I, I don't, it's not it's not the mo around here. Like it's yeah. fucking weird. But like, um, it's just. But that's just how it goes. Like when you're in a shithole, you're stacked on top of each other like fucking rats. Literally, yeah. you're so stacked you like just, a rat. Yeah, none of that. None of that matters to you. Oh, it doesn't affect me. I, I don't have yeah. a gun to my head, so fuck it. But it's really sad. But yeah, I I do like. Um, so what I've heard about the legislation possibly being shot down about the carry laws in New York. That's pretty interesting. Um, hopefully, that, hopefully that affects people in a good way, and yeah. again, people are responsible. So, um, so yeah, but yeah. Anyway, we've got one last thing, and that is a word from the last sponsor of today's show and our greatest and most longstanding sponsor, Patriot Patch Company. These guys are the home of the Patch of the Month Club, right? Where every month. You will get, oh, I haven't got this one yet. Free bonus patch and the Eagle. <laughs> Look at the American Defense. 5% cash back for arms, ammunition, and gear only. That would be a decent <laughs> card. <laughs> That'd be amazing. But yeah, I've got here their Spooktober card, which, uh, or the Spooktober patch, which is a little, little, uh, little witch. She's on a, a little AR. Kind of hot, yeah. Yeah, little. I know little a lot of people witch. in your Discord that would do that, but hey. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but but yeah. So we've got a code for Patriot Patch. It's Twig Ten T W I G Ten, or whatever patch you want. Just get yourself a little discount. You know, for us, check out their accessories, their cleaning mats, their closeouts, their signs, their stickers, and their shirts. They're a good company, good people. Repeatedly banned from social media for some reason, um, and they've been holding strong. So again, check them out. Hell but yeah. th that's all we have for today, guys. Mike, any closing remarks? That's about it. Good talk. Right on. All right. Thank you all so much for coming, and we will see you next time.